Welcome to Not Without Coffee with Glenn Mathis for the coffee connoisseur who wants to know more about their cup of ambition. Join Glenn as he uncovers some fun facts about coffee and coffee history, his own storied past with this bean brew, and some new coffee trends on the horizon. Glenn has his cup. It's time to grab yours and start this episode. Not Without Coffee. Here's Glenn. Hello and welcome back, fellow coffee lover. How was your work week? Or in this some cases, how is your work week going? Do you have your coffee ready? Are you in your relaxing zone? Let's go ahead and get a couple of deep breaths in. Smell the smooth, fresh aroma and exhale through the mouth. And one more deep breath. <sighs> exhale through the mouth. Smooth, relaxing. You know, I wonder if they use coffee smell for yoga studios. I think that would be really cool. Or how about even like a coffee brewing while you're meditating? Wouldn't they help you in and relax any more by any chance? What's your opinion on that? Well, let's get started. You're in your quiet zone, your relaxed mode. Today's topic is simply, how important is coffee? And let me welcome you, fellow coffee lover, and also to my guests who are not particularly fond of coffee, welcome to the show. All is welcome. Again, I said, how important is coffee? I mean, it's brown water, black water. What is the big deal? Now, I can't, with me personally, I can't go a day without it. I need to walk around with an IV drip of coffee. If I could do that all day, it'd be giving me a good excuse to wear the gowns. You know, with the back showing, you ain't got under clothes up. <laughs> Just to get my IV. Now, also, stay tuned to the very end. I have a really crazy, bizarre story about coffee and what happened to me one time at work. It's really interesting. Now, coffee is so important. I mean, worldwide, it's the second most drink beverage, only second to water. Now, it's interesting because coffee is pretty much made of water. So you can kind of give maybe a close, close second. Also, you remember in the first episode, I call it nature's tranquility drink. Some people even call it nectar of the gods, if you would. It helps you start the day, and it helps you finish the day. Uh, it's your number one drink of choice. I know it's mine. How many times a day do you drink coffee? For me, about mm, two to three cups a day. I must have my coffee fix daily, though. Now, coffee is so prominent in the U.S. that it has its own day. Yes, that's right. There is a coffee day in the United States, which is September the 9th. That's coming up, by the way. And in Japan, some spas have swimming pools filled with coffee, which is actually on my bucket list, by the way. Can you imagine swimming in a cool pool of coffee? Man, I bet that's relaxing alone, just the smell of it. It's the second most traded commodity in the world. It's only second to oil. You know, at night, for me, I work uh, what some people might consider the graveyard shift from 9 p.m. to 5.30 a.m. And when I get off work every morning, I have a 45 commute one way. But when I get off work every morning, I drive by, I drive by about six coffee shops and about three Dunkin' Donuts. And I kid you not, the lines for every one of them are out in the road, at least 10 cars deep. And that is before the rush comes in. That is how important coffee is. I mean, Dunkin' Donuts changed the symbol from the donut to the coffee. They probably sell more coffee than they do donuts. It's amazing how coffee is. And I like it because it's ever trending. It's not necessarily going away. But it's a slow, gradual growth, so to speak. I think it's uh, each generation adds a new, a new breed of coffee lovers to the mix, so to speak. One generation, they keep, instead of the plain cup of coffee, they want these mocha latte with the twist and all this. <laughs> I can't even name it. Fellow coffee lover, how important is coffee to you? I used to work with a guy who drank 10 cups a day, and I thought my three cups was a lot. Also, remember that wild story I told you I promised you earlier? You see, I work overnight in a factory. 
And a few years back, I'll never forget, one month we ran out of paper towels. No one really complained. No big deal. Nothing was really said about it. A few pointed out, but that was about it. A few months later, we ran out of toilet paper. A few complaints, but nothing major. Uh, guess what we ran out the last month of that year? If you guessed coffee, you guessed right. I mean, people lost their minds. What? No coffee? I, I can't work like this. I mean, I, some workers left, went to the nearest 7-Eleven or Starbucks, bought a cup of coffee, and was an hour late clocking in. That's how much coffee is important to some people. Many complain all day long, only to have supervisors and managers uh, gathering all the change they could to go to the nearest grocery store and buy coffee, only to have it run out in an hour or so. We even had workers go back into the parking lot, call in sick from their cars, because word has spread out that there was no more coffee. The next day, it's funny too, uh, one of the managers told me half the crew called in to see if we gotten fresh coffee. And is it freshly made? No need to say that we never ran out of coffee again. That was for sure. Now, it was that serious on a scale of 1 to 10. I mean, people love their coffee. It is very important. Now, let me ask you something, coffee lover. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the greatest, or how serious are you with your coffee? How many days can you go without it? For me, I guess it's uh, two or three days, but I love it. I mean... It's not a life-threatening thing for me, uh, but I still got to have my cough. Email me your opinion on that at www.notwithoutcoffee.com. I want to know your thoughts on it. Now, I'm coming up with a future podcast where I'll bring more ideas, hacks with coffee, to show you how essential coffee makes a difference in our lives. I'm also going to add a future podcast, tons of health benefits of some drinking coffee. Another thing also about how important coffee is, is how it brings people together in a social setting. I mean, how many marriages started out with a first date being over a cup of coffee? How many ideas existed because several minded, group minded people got started in a coffee shop over coffee, drinking up, trying to come up with the idea? Coffee is a very important, significant element in our lives. Even if it's just staying at home, calling in sick, drinking a hot cup of coffee all day long, and relaxing to music, it is very important. I'll never forget the first time I moved to Florida. The very first weekend I I was there, I drove to Daytona, and I got a hotel on the beach. And the first thing I wanted to do, I've never seen done, was the sun rise up out of the Atlantic Ocean. And I got to saw it, and it was very incredible. And of course, you know that cup of coffee was right there next to it. I mean, how many views, breathtaking views, moments, or enhanced, so to speak, with just a cup of coffee? How many family gatherings have been over morning breakfast with a cup of coffee, where generations are seeing this, passing it down to generation to generation? Coffee is very important, and a lot of people maybe tend to overlook it, but it is here to stay. Let me ask you something, fellow coffee lover. What is your perfect setting or moment with the cup of hot java in hand? Can you remember that? Is it on a cold winter's morning, looking out at the white snow falling, drinking your cup of coffee nice and warm and toasty? Fellow coffee lover, I want to thank you again for listening and tuning in to this podcast. Remember to share with your friends about your new coffee hangout. And check out the website at www notwithoutcoffee.com. Keep grinding and take care. Fellow coffee lover, thanks for listening. Be sure to tune in every Saturday morning, Central USA. Also, sharing is caring. So tell a fellow coffee lover about your new hangout. To contact us, just go to our website, www.notwithoutcoffee.com. Take care and remember to always keep brewing.